This is NHK World, September 3rd of 2015. Engineers have tested a robot designed to remove radioactive substances from high places in nuclear reactor buildings at the crippled Fukushima Daiichi power plant in northeastern Japan. The plant's operator, Tokyo Electric Power Company, plans to use the device as soon as October to decontaminate the building of the facility's number three reactor. The robot emits high pressure jets of frozen carbon dioxide grains onto wall and scrapes off the coating along with radioactive substances. The machine's ladder like structure with a nozzle can reach as high as 8 meters. Engineers at electronic makers Toshiba tested the robot on Thursday at a factory in Toyohashi City, Ayachi Prefecture. Part of the reactor building was simulated at the factory. Now, here's my question. In this simulated test, did they have the radiation levels at 88,000 sieverts? Nanosieverts? Because when you look at Fukushima Daiichi in that reactor building, it's 88,000 uh, nanosieverts per hour. So, I've seen every robot that they've tried to send in there, short circuited, they fall to the ground, not even, can't even recover them. So, I'm just wondering how much radiation this new robot is going to be able to withstand. The engineers operated the robot remotely while watching footage from 22 cameras attached to the machine. They carefully scraped a blue coating off a 3 meter high wall. The device is expected to speed up decommissioning work at the plant, where the robots could not remove radioactive substances from high places. High radiation levels in the reactor buildings prevent workers from entering them. Toshiba's senior engineer, Hitoshi Sakai, said little is known about contamination at high places in the building. He added that his firm wants to create an environment that's accessible by workers by removing radioactive substances. Well, I can say is good luck, and really that's probably the only hope that we have is if to send in millions and millions of drones to decontaminate that building and go in there and clean it up. But hey, the horse has already left the barn. Are they going to have drones that are going to be able to go miles into the earth to re recover the quariums? Now, what I think they're going to have to do, this is going to be ridiculously expensive. They're going to have to make robots out of the most expensive materials known to man that can withstand these radiation levels. They're going to have to be using gold, which is super heavy. Gold would probably at least uh, help with the tritium, which is a huge amount of tritium around these reactors. Another suggestion that they thought about is using a pulley system from the outside and you could send in kind of like a snake like object to maneuver around debris because that's just a simple problem, super problem in itself is these robots just going around the debris fields. They'll hit the debris and they fall down, boom. So they've actually tried to make a transforming robot that could transform into a snake and kind of maneuver itself, wiggle around these debris fields. But then the radiation is too high. So you're going to have to use super heavy components that can block out the radiation of, of material. And then you have to make a robot that's bulky and heavy. So it's, it's a huge challenge. First at Fukushima, they wanted to make a robot that could open up pressure, open up these release valves like you see the one here. So their arms, they need the power, the strength to be able to turn one of those and keep their balance. And they haven't really done a good job with that, making a robot that can do that and get through the debris field. TEPCO gave up on that idea of a robot that could turn off some of these release valves or turn them back on. So their next strategy was, let's just make robots that can go in there, take pictures and just get measurements. So that's the only 
Um, so far, that's the only thing we've been able to do with robots is just take measurements and pictures. And like you see here, they, they just don't go very far inside these buildings. They actually put a robot inside of a little boat and they were able to float one and I think that was their 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 best success was they actually sent it through a sent a little robot boat through the water and they got a reading that way so this is almost like Mission Impossible 